Hi everyone, my name is Elaine, and today I'm going to be both summarizing and reviewing the eighth book in Terry Pratchett's Discworld series, Guards Guards. I'm going to be starting with the summary. Dragons lie dormant and packed tightly outside of normal space. Captain Vimes of the Night Watch passes out in one of Ank Morpork's gutters, a series of letters made of light change color above him. The Unseen University's books speak to one another. As a librarian sleeps, a figure creeps amongst the shelves. Brother Fingers brings the book he was asked to retrieve to a meeting of the unique and supreme lodge of the elucidated brethren. The Supreme Grand Master convinces the brothers to summon a dragon with the book's help. When someone steps in to save the city, they will become its new and rightful king. The Grand Master plans to be Ank Morpork's new ruler. The brothers aren't aware of this fact. Carrot heads toward Ank Morpork. He carries a sword he received in mysterious circumstances. Vimes awakens. He had gotten drunker after having to bury Gaskin with the other two remaining Night Watch members, the most hated men in all of Ank Morpork. Someone else is coming to replace Gaskin. Vimes knows as he slumps back into the gutter. The letters of light flicker. Carrot had been raised by dwarves after his parents, the king and queen of their clan, had found him in the woods. His family had been attacked and killed by bandits. Carrot's father had decided to send him away because he had grown too tall for the mines and should be allowed to spend some time with his kind, humans. Before he leaves, the king gives his son a wool vest and sword. Carrot arrives in Ink Morpork and asks a gate guard for directions so he can present himself for work at the Night's Watch. The Lodge attempts to summon a dragon. The Supreme Grand Master transport himself to a dark alley and fills his stomach with fire. Zebo Moody, a thief, is the first to see the Ink Morpork dragon. He is roasted alive. Death comes to collect him. The Supreme Grand Master tells his brothers that they succeeded, but the dragon vanished when the magic ran out. In order to get it to stick around longer, they have to use more magic. Carrot writes a letter to his father. Erdo Van Pew, the president of Ink Morpork's Guild of Thieves, visits the patrician. He expects an apology from the Night Watch because he had been arrested by Carrot. Vimes is called in to speak to Wands, the patrician's secretary. Wands tells him what transpired between Carrot and Van Pew and asks Vimes to put an end to Carrot's behavior. Carrot writes a letter to his mother telling her about his experience. Vimes catches up with Sergeant Colin about everything that has been going on. Carrot is out learning the ropes from Corporal Nobs. Vimes and Colin step out. Brother Watchtower tries stealing the letters of the illuminated sign from the tavern near the watch house. Carrot plays the role of town crier while out on patrol. He does so so loudly that Nobby grows fearful that he'll attract the wrong kind of attention. Against Nobby's better judgment, Carrot enters a dwarf bar to break up a brawl. Carrot breaks up the brawl by speaking dwarvish and asking the crowd what their poor mothers would think of their behavior. He expects better from them in the future. Nobby takes Carrot to the amended drum. Carrot tries to arrest Charlie, the man in charge. Someone throws a glass. The senior members of the Night Watch observe the brawl taking place in the mended drum from the street. Vimes and the sergeant head inside to investigate. They make it inside at the end of the fight. Carrot reports the patron's offenses before collapsing. Vimes decides to let them off with a caution. The watchmen retrieve Carrot and retreat. The Supreme Grand Master prepares to perform another experimental summoning with his brothers. The members of the Night Watch walk through the shades. They hear a loud noise and see a light and go to investigate. It's a rapidly cooling wall with something dreadful on it. The Supreme Grand Master announces that the brothers have been successful. The brothers repeat the oath. Vimes and the other watch members show the wall and some footprints to the patrician and his secretary. The patrician dismisses Vimes' suspicion that it's the work of a dragon and asks Vimes to cover the prince up. Vimes senses that something is wrong. The prince lead out of the alley, so something big and fiery came out of the alley but didn't come in. That's on page 99. After following the watch into the shades, the librarian views the evidence. Upon returning to the library, he discovers that one of its books has been stolen. The patrician speaks to Wands about how to deal with the silhouette scorched wall in the shades and privately considers how to contend with a dragon problem. Vimes had disobeyed orders. He had taken a plaster cast of the footprint. Vimes sends the senior officers to see if they can find anything unusual and Carrot is put in charge of the office while Vimes goes to visit Lady Ramkin, a swamp dragon breeder. The librarian visits the watch house to report the stolen book and leads Carrot away. The Supreme Grand Master begins his conjurings again. While out on patrol, Nobby and Sergeant Colin spot the dragon. Vimes shows Lady Ramkin the plaster cast of the footprint he retrieved. She says it belongs to a noble dragon. Lady Ramkin's dragons grow silent as they stare at the roof. The librarian leads Carrot to the missing book and begins to act out its title so he will know what has been taken. Lady Ramkin and Vines watch the dragon soar over the city, set fire to several buildings. Vimes realizes it must be living in Ink Morpork somewhere as he departs from Lady Ramkin's home. The dragon vanishes. Vimes makes note of what it damaged on his way back to the watch house. Nobby arrives and informs him that Sergeant Colin had a nasty turn on page 129. Carrot arrives with the librarian and reports that the missing book is called The Summoning of Dragons and was used to summon the dragon which is illegal. Nobby wants to 
to look for the dragon's gold. The Supreme Grand Master and his brothers, with the exception of Dunny Kin, who had been bitten by a crocodile, discuss the individual they plan to put on the throne. A crowd fills the streets outside the patrician's palace. Vimes learns from Cut Me On Throat Dibbler, a salesman, that the patrician has offered a $50,000 reward to anyone who brings him the head of the dragon. Vimes continues on his way to the palace. The dragon hunters and Ankh Morpork's civic leaders don't take the reward seriously. They had expected half the kingdom and the patrician's daughter's hand in marriage, even though he doesn't have a daughter. The patrician wonders if he could negotiate with the dragon. Vimes appears before the patrician. He is asked to locate the dragon's lair. Vimes meets with the librarian. The librarian agrees that whoever stole the book was familiar to the library, either a wizard or someone who works in the university. Vimes considers how to track down the dragon's lair. The Night Watch and many Ankh Morporkians look for the dragon in the night sky. Vimes finally finds it on top of the Tower of Art. The dragon attacks the city and burns the watch house down. As she watches the dragon attack Ankh Morpork, Lady Ramkin realizes that something is wrong. Vimes awakens in Lady Ramkin's bed. He had been brought there on her orders following the dragon's attack. Carrot had saved him and the sergeant. Lady Ramkin tells Vimes that she studied the dragon during the attack and it shouldn't be able to fly. Lady Ramkin tells Vimes that it seems as though one species of dragon started to get bigger and bigger and then just vanished. She thinks they found somewhere where they could really be, some other dimension or something, where the gravity isn't so strong. That's on page 165. Lady Ramkin gifts the watch with an old house in Pseudopolis Yard to use as their new headquarters since the old watch house had burned down. Vimes falls asleep and awakens to the sound of a mob. The mob wants to kill Lady Ramkin's dragons. They fear that one of them may be the dragon terrorizing the city. Vimes breaks the mob up by frightening them with one of the swamp dragons, Good Boy Bindle Featherstone, and using logic. Lady Ramkin gives Vimes Good Boy as a friend. Vimes wonders if he can use the swamp dragon to track the larger dragon. Lady Ramkin delivers Vimes and Good Boy to the new watch house. Sergeant Colon explains that he swore the librarian in as a special constable while Vimes was away so that he could help with the dragon problem. After comforting the brethren, the Supreme Grand Master summons the dragon again. Vimes tells everyone that he plans on trying to use Good Boy, renamed Errol, to lead them to the larger dragon. The watch and Lady Ramkin head to the scorched wall, which had yet to be torn down by the patrician's men. From there, Errol leads them to the dragon. It flies away when a horn sounds. Vime orders the group to go after it. A crowd gathers in the plaza of Broken Moons. When Lady Ramkin and the watch arrive, Throat explains some kids written into the city and said he'd kill the dragon. That's on page 192. The kid prepares to fight the dragon. Errol's wings beat in tune with its larger brethren. He hisses, his eyes fixated on the larger beast. The boy defeats the dragon. It vanishes in a cloud of purple smoke. Lady Ramkin and Vimes are surprised. They had expected some dragon guts to clean up. The boy is born to the palace. Venonari is imprisoned. Vimes senses something fishy. A crime had definitely been committed and he's going to get to the bottom of it. The dragon is angry. It begins to search for a way back from banishment. Lady Ramkin attends a ball in the king's name. She's surprised it could be organized so quickly. The coronation is to be held the following day. When she goes to feed her dragons, she finds them quiet and attentive, waiting for something to happen. She heads into the city. The librarian is ill at ease. Everything was too neat. For example, the sudden convenient appearance of Ankh Morpork's heir. He senses that the stolen book is the key to everything and carries out a plan to find out what the book contains. Vimes inspects the area where the dragon was slain. He thinks the dragon went somewhere. Errol is discomfited. Lady Ramkin comes to collect Vimes in her coach and takes him away. The dragon appears in the plaza. The dragon begins searching for the stink of mines. That's on page 213. The librarian heads into L space, which connects all libraries everywhere. That's on 215. He has a specific special destination in mind. Vimes and Lady rank him keep an eye on the dragon. Vimes convinced that it can't survive without magic. Vimes thinks that the dragon eats magic and needs a lot to sustain itself. He believes the dragon may be using the distilled magical power in Unseen University's library to survive. Lady Ramkin tries to get the dragon under control and fails. Errol and Vimes come to her rescue. The larger dragon flies away. Lady Ramkin insists they go after it. Errol chases after the dragon. He's still trying to challenge his larger brethren. Lady Ramkin and Vimes follow Errol in the coach. The city begins to prepare for the coronation. Sergeant Colin, Nobby, and Carrot think they feel something glide past them, like the dragon. Lady Ramkin and Vimes come to collect them. The group continues to pursue Errol. Vimes cries out in dismay. All of the brothers, with the exception of Brother Fingers, are burned alive by the dragon. Brother Fingers returns with the pizzas he was sent to fetch. Vimes has him arrested. He seems guilty. Colin says he's Bengi Lightfoot Bogus, a member of the Thieves Guild, who used to do odd jobs at the university. Vimes says Bengi is to be charged with the theft of the book before he is taken away in the coach. Carrot and Vimes, who had not accompanied the thief back to HQ, spot another hooded figure and lose him in an alley. Vimes wants to take Carrot to the palace to warn everyone that the dragon is back. The palace guards don't want to let Carrot and Vimes into the palace to see the king. Carrot has to place them under arrest before he and Vimes can make their way inside. The librarian continues moving through L space, stops when he arrives home a week ago. Vimes informs Wands that the dragon has returned. Wands is 
is skeptical. Vimes collapses. The librarian retrieves a copy of The Summoning of Dragons and begins reading. Colin informs Vimes that three societies use the house that burned down, that their suspect ran away. The librarian finishes the book, finds out where the brothers meet by following the thief, and then returns to L space. Vimes sounds a false alarm during the coronation. Wands forces him to turn in his badge as punishment. Nobby, Carrot, and Colin find the dragon on top of the Dome of Small Gods. The crowd spots the dragon and begins to panic. The dragon interrupts the coronation. The high priest of Blind Io presents the beast with the king's crown before he's killed. The dragon grabs Wands and heads toward the palace. Destruction commences. The patrician smiles in his cell. The Ink Morporkians celebrate their new dragon king. The civic leaders are ordered to go to the palace for lunch. They discover that it has changed since the patrician's rule. The Great Hall is greater, for example. Wands explains that the king hopes for coronation gifts from the people of Ink Morpork like gems and precious metals. That the king hopes to pursue a vigorous and dynamic foreign policy to expand the city's wealth and his hoard. That's on page 280. Also, that privy counselors will be rewarded handsomely. Finally, the group discusses the king's diet, one human a month. Before the civic leaders depart, Wands asks the chief assassin to help him. A couple of palace guards arrive at the yard with a proclamation of the king's diet, one virgin a month. Colin doesn't think anyone will stand for it. Carrot wonders what they're going to do. Vimes wants his job back, to get rid of the dragon, and to find the person or persons responsible for the city's current predicament. Ink Morpork is smoking. Sergeant Colin reads the proclamation to a crowd. It is met with a mixture of responses. The dragon appears and roasts a man who speaks out against the proclamation. The librarian returns to the present. The dragon sets fire to a large portions of the city. Its people fight to put them out or flee, but are soon shepherded back into the city by the dragon. Sergeant Colin decides that the watch needs to come up with a plan in order to fight the dragon. He doesn't seem to approve of Nobby's suggestion that he shoot it in the vulnerables. Vimes catches Wands retrieving a book from beneath the floorboards in the patrician's bedroom. Wands admits that Vetinari summoned the dragon and lost his hold over it. The former patrician is involved in most of the plots against his life. Wands was hoping to sort out the dragon problem with the book. He offers to give Vimes his job back. Vimes says that Wands can't. Vimes discovers that he can't kill Wands like he had originally intended. Wands orders the guards to arrest Vimes and then go about another task. Vimes wonders what it is. He is thrown into the dungeon and a peanut shell lands nearby. Errol is sick. The palace guard arrives at Lady Ramkin's house with a summons. She is to be fed to the dragon. Vimes discovers that he shares the dungeon with Vetinari, who is being waited on by rats. That the guards rarely visit and the dungeon door had all its bolts and bars on the inside and its lock on the outside. Sergeant Colin practices his shot. Nobby tries to come up with an escape plan with Carrot just in case Colin misses the dragon. Vimes works on escaping from the dungeon. The librarian comes to a decision. Sergeant Colin, Nobby, and Carrot realize that they need to adjust the odds of the sergeant succeeding. The librarian frees Vimes. Vimes learns that a highborn maiden is going to be sacrificed to the dragon. He won't have it on his watch. As the librarian deals with a palace guard who called him a monkey, Vimes heads into the streets after the dragon. Errol is getting worse. Carrot spots several guards chaining Lady Ramkin to a rock. Sergeant Colin is pissed and prepares to defend her. The dragon appears. Sergeant Colin takes his shot. Vimes struggles to keep up and fears for his men when he spots them on the roof of a whiskey distillery. Sergeant Colin misses. The dragon rounds on the watchman on the rooftop, breathing fire at them. The distillery burns, then explodes. Vimes rescues Lady Ramkin. The bronze dragon appears behind them. They prepare to die. Carrot, Nobby, and Sergeant Colin survive the explosion. Carrot convinces his senior officers to follow him. They're going to fight the dragon and save the city. Lord Vetinari escapes the dungeon and strides into his palace. Lady Ramkin's dragon kennels explode. The dragons leave. Errol challenges the dragon king before fleeing. Errol returns and continues the fight. The city folk join in. Colin informs Vimes that Carrot has arrested the dragon. Carrot reads the dragon's offenses. It rises and flies away with Errol. Apparently, the king is a queen. Vimes leaves leads his men toward the palace. The group arrives at the palace and arrests the guards at the gate before continuing on their way. Wands flees from the patrician, but the patrician catches up. Vimes and his men place Wands under arrest. Wands falls to his death after Carrot throws a book at him. Wands had tried to kill the patrician. Death comes to collect Wands. The librarian retrieves the summoning of dragons from Wands' corpse. He shows Vimes a passage which causes Vimes to realize that dragons go into our imaginations. And when we call them back, we shape them, like squeezing dough into pastry shapes. Only you don't get gingerbread men, you get what you are. Your own darkness given shape. That's on page 386. Vimes also allows the librarian to take the city's law book from the corpse. The watch is rewarded for its heroic deeds, mainly with each member getting a raise. Lady Ramkin has dinner with Vimes and suggests she look after him. Errol and the dragon fly into space, and that's the end of the book. Now for my book review. It took a really long time for the watch to catch onto most of the individuals behind the dragon's summoning. 
This was a bit wearing at times since readers knew from pretty early on who was behind the summoning. I really like the fact that the novel was fast paced, there was always something going on and I found that very engaging. Also felt that for the most part, Vimes is not painted in a good light. He's a drunkard with a long history of just not doing his job, running away from danger, not fighting crime, but he gradually begins to redeem himself as the novel progresses by saving Lady Ramkin, etc. Most of the supporting cast felt a little bland. The Supreme Grand Master was arrogant and power hungry, was simply using the brother to try and achieve his own goals with no thought to their desires or well-being. Carrot may be described as both innocent and naive. He doesn't know a lot of things that someone his age should. He's also a very honest man and generally good-natured and remains so despite Ink Morpork's corrupting forces. That isn't to say that I didn't like some of them, like Carrot for example, but I felt as though they could be a little more well-rounded. I imagine they will be developed later on in the series and look forward to seeing their character development and their progression as people. I also liked how the novel was a good blend of action, fantasy, awkward romance, comedy, and mystery. So overall, I give the book a 3.4 out of 5 stars. There were definitely some stronger novels in the series so far, and I think this could have been a little better if some of the characters were more well-rounded and the characters kept up with readers a little better. So there you have it. That is my summary and review of Terry Pratchett's Guards Guards, the eighth novel in the Discworld series. If you like what you saw here today, please give me a thumbs up. I love those. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the novel, of this review. If you have any questions, let me know. I'd love to take some time to read your thoughts and questions and answer them. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell so you know what's up, and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye, guys.